Hello world and welcome to episode 4 of Strat Watch. So here we go again. We're going to bring you an update with all our latest development stratosphere wise. Let's see what's happening at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over the Arctic and the North Pole currently. And they'll be having a look at some forecast data from the GFS and also from the uh, ECM WF extended model as well. So I should get on that for you in a moment. If you enjoy the content on the channel at the moment, please can you like, share, and subscribe. And show to everybody for doing that. Drop a comment and let us know what you think about this little bit of video. Don't get to your friends about the hours or whatever. We thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. We're going to be live streaming later on at 6 p.m. with live stream at 10 to 14 there. And we might do a little bit of a mini snow watching with that uh, as well. So uh, check out the live at uh, 6. I shall see you then. Don't forget the 6 p.m. forecast was released earlier on today as well thank you so much everybody right okay <laughs> let's start off having a look at the situation uh across uh, the north pole right now then so this is from the uh, jma uh, the black line shows where temperatures have been through this season at 10 8 p.m strategy and where they currently are just here against the uh, average uh which is uh, which of course is the grey line. Shoo! Shoo, 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 shoo. Um, we are a little bit below average, actually, with the temperature at 10 HPA right now in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. Not a big deviation, but we're about 2, 3 degrees below where you'd expect us to be. It should be around minus 72, minus 73, I think. And we're still around minus 75 to minus 76. We're just a little bit uh, below average and holding relatively steady at that point. We're going a little bit low down to 30 HPA. HPA, which closer to the troposphere, but we're more significantly uh, below average. The temperature at the end of November at uh, 30 HPA should be somewhere around minus 70, uh, minus 74, something like that. And we're currently close around minus, uh, minus 78, I think. We're not that far away from minus 80, actually. We're only taking another little tick down and we'd be dropping to minus 80 there. So quite, you know, quite a bit more cold average at 30 HPA compared to uh, 10 HPA. It's not overly dramatic, but it is more notable that we, we're uh, we're colder there uh, compared to average than we are at uh, 10 HPA. So this is from uh, the GFS model, and uh, we can see, of course, with these blue and purple colours, these are the cold temperatures in the uh, stratosphere at 10 HPA. So it's basically the polar vortex at its roots. In the stratosphere that we're, uh, we're, we're looking at there. So uh, you can see the coldest temperature actually over on our side of the Arctic and the Park, where we're below minus 80, minus 84 around Greenland and to the north of the Scandinavia. Back to the um, Arctic itself, there we see the temperature again somewhere in the mid minus 70s, uh, really. So let's see what happens over the next few days. Now you'll notice this green yellow area here over Siberia, but this is a very slight warming of the stratosphere. It's not SSW by any means, but it is a, war a warming of the stratosphere, rel relatively minor, minus warming of the stratosphere that's taking place over uh, Siberia there. But that increases as we go into next week. It does actually start up gathering pace a little bit. Notice the curls start to get a little bit more intense there. Again, still falling shorter than SSW though. We've got to go to the red colours to see that, that the temperatures reached um, SSW uh, threshold. And then there are other requirements that we would need to so had an SSW such as a reversal of zonal wind and uh, maybe a split of the PV as well, although technically it's a reverse of solar winds at 10 HPA. So, um, yeah, quite a significant warming anyway, particularly so early on in the season. But bear in mind, it's only the 5th of December. I mean, it's very, very, very early to be seeing any kind of warming at all really take place uh, anywhere over the, um, you know, Northern Hemisphere of the strategy at this point of the year. It's very, very early days for that. So um, we have this warming over Siberia, and that sort of pushes in towards Canada as we move on in towards the extent. So we're coming up to 7th, 8th of December. Now, notice both green, uh, yellow colours begin to move towards the uh, western um, side of Arctic Canada. Uh, it's not in, impacting the, the polar vortex particularly, other than there's a bit of a displacement going on. So you'll notice that these blue colours have been shunted more and more day by day over towards um, the Atlantic and uh, Northern European side of the Arctic of the North Pole. So over the North Pole itself, we're probably here, maybe this is a forecast, so not guaranteed to come up, but uh, we're probably up to about, or, or probably seeing the temperature up to around minus 68 to minus 64. So uh, if, uh, if that does come up, the black line 
we'll be doing something a little bit like that through early uh through the early part of december so you know slight warming of stratosphere of course yeah our ssw will be going up here up to that level so <laughs> it's well short of that but it is as i say uh noteworthy uh that we're, we're seeing this for so early on in the season now that warming kind of starts to fizzle out but another warming begins to gather pace again starting off over siberia that will also moving in towards canada as well just keeping this slight displacement of the uh, pv going there um again it's not anything that's going to disrupt the polar vortex particularly other than maybe start slowing down so we'll talk about that in a moment it's certainly not going to split pb um and and uh and, and so it is an ssw but it's noteworthy but we are seeing uh warmings already taking place just perhaps starting to help soften up the pv ready for an attack from a genuine ssw perhaps a little bit later on in the season so that's how the gfs for the next couple of weeks let's have a look at the ecmwf terms of the 10 HPA temperature uh, forecast for the weekly anomaly, starting with uh, week one, which is next week, the 4th to be 11th of December. So you look at that and you will think that's an SSW, but what that is, what we see there, is uh, is this, uh, basically, where are you? just uh, there on the top. So, so what we see here, in terms of that big red area, remember that's an anomaly to average, is basically this. So where we've got this green-yellow area, we're going up to around sort of 8 to 10 degrees above average. Have a look at the scale. We can see that the deep red colours there are 10 degrees. Or so the, the thing with this is, of course, it only goes to 10 degrees above average or more. So when you get to this very dark red shading, it's, why it's very difficult to work out whether it's actually predicting an SSW or not. But we, we know from this that it's not an SSW. But it would be helpful, if anyone's watching from ECMWF.9.2, which I don't suppose they are, but it would be helpful if the scale could be increased, you know. And, and like, I don't know how you do it with the colour shadings, but it would be helpful if the, if the, if the scale could go about 50 degrees above average, because that is, you know, that's where, where a genuine SSW is. A uh, genuine sun stratosphere will see the temperature anomaly go to about 50 degrees above normal. I don't suppose that would be possible in terms of a temperature scale, but if they could do that, it would be very helpful. But anyway, we know that's not an SSW, but it is quite a significant warming of the stratosphere from Siberia, moving into towards the Canadian side of the Arctic. Week 2 looks like that. It's the 11th to the 18th of December. Again, that warming is maintained. Week 3 is the 18th to 25th of December. Warming maintained uh, again. Uh, week 4 is the 25th of December to the 4th of December. Yeah, to 1st of January, Christmas Day to New Year's Day. So, constant looking above average with the temperature at 10 HP, even if it's not an, a Jamin SSW that we're seeing here, we are seeing continuously uh, above average temperature anomalies, which is very, very interesting and will have an effect on the PV, I would have thought, to um, at the very least sort of slow it down, maybe disrupt it. Uh, that's how it looks as we get to uh, the final week, which is the 1st to the 8th of January. Uh, and again, you know, we we are on a temperature scale, I suppose we're up to about 8 degrees above average at the centre there. So again, that is an SSW, but it is a sustained sort of uh, warm warming up the stratosphere over several weeks. Another way of looking at the um, at the uh, strength of polar vortex is with the zonal wind. So this is the zonal mean, zonal wind forecast, 10 HPA from ECMWF, uh, it again. And we can see once more that right now we're actually above average, strong on average with a zone of wind. Um, as we go through December, though, it does look as though we're going to have a deceleration of a zone of wind. Notice this thick blue line just here, that is the ensemble mean. And, uh, and so that is reducing, you know, uh, from, from where it is right now. Through, through the early part of December, and it reduces further uh, through the middle part of December towards the Christmas period by the look of it. There are several ensemble members now that are going for a reversal of zone wings. This zero line just here is very, very important because that 
that tells us the ensemble members that are going for an, a technical SSW, which is a reversal of zona winds at 10 HPA, 60 degrees north. And uh, this is a bit of an increase, actually, for the number of ensemble members that are going for a reversal of zona winds sometime around from around Christmas into the new year. Uh, so early January, I suppose. Um, so, I mean... Again, they're a minority, but there's more of them than, than has been the case on previous runs of, of, the, of the ECM extended, I think. Well, generally, most of the ensemble members are going for a, a, a weakening, a deceleration of zone wings as we go through the second half of December in particular. So weakening actually starts through early December with, with the warming that we got starting next week. But uh, the, de the proper deceleration of zone wings, I think, is more, um, you know, into the second half of uh, December. Of course, there are still some ensemble members that keep us going very strong up here. But uh, many of those ensemble members now are seem to be or seem to be picking up on on at least a weakening of zero wins through December, if not uh, reversal. So it's all looking quite interesting stratosphere wise. We did, of course, our winter update, final winter update on Sunday, and we explored the, re the relationship between El Nino and the easterly phase of Aquarius Iberian Oscillation. And we established, you know, that when you have that combination of an El Nino with an ECQBO, we are at greater risk of an SSW. And so we will be expecting to get a certain stratosphere warming at some point through this winter, I think. Um, the question is, when would it happen? The earlier it happens, the greater the impact could be on uh, the winter, depending on what type of SSW we get. Of course, you've got displacement events versus split events. If you want like a big, um, a big uh, sort of blocking response, you want to really get a split of the PV and obliteration of it at its roots. So that's an unknown, you know, what kind of SSW we'll get. But we are expecting that we will get an SSW for this season. Of course, the other unknown is when that happens. If it doesn't happen until the end of winter, then it have much more of an effect on the spring in March and April than it, than it will on the winter itself. So lots and lots of questions to answer, but all the indications are that uh, we are going to get SSW this winter, and of course we shall uh, keep you posted about it at Gazweb, of course we will. And I think the fact that we're already seeing these uh, warmings of strategy, albeit they're relatively minor and modest, but the fact that we are already seeing these warmings appearing, uh, I reckon it's uh, an indication of where we're going to go, maybe around the new year, um, sometime in that time frame, where, where we're going to go with this winter in terms of the strat. So we're going to keep you updated. Episode 5 of Strat Watch will be released next week. Same time, same place. If you may enjoy the video, found it interesting and informative, please keep like, share and subscribe. We'll be back with more very, very soon. Uh, remember, we will be including stratospheric data within our 10 to 14 day updates as well. So this isn't, as, as always, so um, this isn't replacing anything, just in addition to. But, um, you know, particularly I think from next week, we will start including uh, stratospheric data as well in the 10 to 14 day, as well as this one-off individual video. Right, okay, we're going to be live at 6pm with our 10 to 14 day and a perhaps a little mini snow watch. I shall see you later on for that one for episode 4 of Strat Watch. That's all for now. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.